Time for another preview and prediction. This one is Alexander Zverev versus Nick Kyrgios in the fourth round of the Miami Open. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the tennis vlog. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Here I am back again after a pretty dire prediction on the last video. Hopefully it's not so terrible this time around. Quickly before we get into this video, I want to give a thank you to the people that shared my last video on Twitter when it was late uploading. So thank you to Nigel, Susie, Jimmy, Rodney and Deborah. Very much appreciated. Usually at this point in a tournament I would start previewing the quarterfinals usually the WTA quarterfinals are played first and they are lined up now. However, I promised you more ATP previews and predictions this tournament after not really getting around to them at all during Indian Wells due to time zones and whatever. So here I am to preview and predict Nick Kyrgios, the world number 20, against Alexander Zverev, the world number 5. Two of the brightest young talents on the ATP tour, both of them have big wins and big big results to their names. Whatever you think of them in terms of attitude and conduct, there is no question in my mind that their games are good for the men's game. There is a couple of years between them in age. Both of them have birthdays next month in April. Kyrgios is turning 23 and Zverev will be turning 21. So both of them still fairly young when we think that players are peaking around the age of 30 these days. For those unfamiliar with their game styles, they are both really good power players, but there is more to both of them than that. Zverev is very solid off both the forehand and the backhand, has a massive serve, can play at the net, and Kyrgios is often known for his trick shots, his raw power, which can blow any opponent off the court. Kyrgios basically can beat anyone on his day, in fact even the most elite players would find it hard to knock down Kyrgios when he is in the zone, but there is more to Kyrgios than trick shots for the highlights reel, and I think we've been seeing a bit of that in Miami already, so I'm going to start by taking a look at Kyrgios. Kyrgios rode to the fourth round, which he began in round two, given that all 32 seeded players receive a first round bye. So far, he has knocked off Dusan Lajovic of Serbia and Fabio Fanini of Italy. These matches have been the furthest thing from troublesome, even though Fanini is in form again and looks ready to give Kyrgios a bit of a test. Both of the wins came in straight sets, and in 17 service games played, Kyrgios has yet to even face a break point. Even for someone with the bomb of a serve that Kyrgios has, that's a really great statistic. What he has really shown in these two victories is that when he gets the break, all he needs to do is to be comfortable with his serve, and if he's feeling 80% there, then he's unlikely to come under much trouble against this calibre of opposition. Looking at his most recent win, Kyrgios actually played quite a smart game. He wasn't going for so much power on a consistent basis, but he was playing a steady game, not really putting a lot of depth on his shots sometimes, and really making Fanini play the ball. Fanini wasn't having his best day and he was often missing. Despite struggling with injury recently and not being able to play Indian Wells, Kyrgios frankly looks in fine form and is untested heading into his clash with Zverev. In contrast, number four seed Zverev has had a really difficult road to the last six and has played two notable names in both his rounds so far. Starting with Daniel Medvedev, who is another next-gen rising star. Medvedev has picked up a title already this year and looks in good form. He rallies well from the baseline and is quite intense. Zverev came through that one in a final set tiebreak, which would have tested his mentality against a guy who had already struggled through a first round encounter. Then up came David Ferrer, a former world number three, who is known for his gritty determination who has got wins over the biggest names in the sport. He was seeded at 28 in Miami and honestly has lost some of the consistency that saw him rise so far up the rankings. However, he can still push the elite players. He knows exactly what to do to make them feel uncomfortable. I don't think you would call Kyrgios and Zverev the most consistent players when it comes to rallying, and this is where Ferrer really tested Zverev because he was continually making him play that extra ball. Shots that would have been winners potentially coming back at him, always having to play those extra few shots was Zverev and that really tested his placement, his consistency, his ability to stay in the moment. And he was pushed all the way, he lost the first set but he re 
unbounded and his respect for the Spaniard at the end of the match was evident. Ferrer is a player who has beaten Zverev before. So coming into the fourth round we have one player who has really been tested and one who frankly hasn't really at all and it's hard to say whether Zverev is going to feel fatigue and that is going to mess with him in a potentially close encounter or whether the fact that Kyrgios hasn't really been pushed yet and had been out with injury before will mean that he's not quite ready for the close battle that this contest could well be. Looking across at their head-to-head -head now, you can see that things have been very close throughout their rivalry, which still has a long way to go, which is exciting stuff for the ATP Tour. They have faced off five times, all on outdoor hard court, which makes it interesting given that Miami is also an outdoor hard court. In fact, one of the meetings came in Miami, which was last year. They faced off in back-to-back -back tournaments in the prestigious Indian Wells and Miami double. It remains to be seen whether this will have an impact on today's clash, but Kyrgios won both of these clashes in straight sets in Indian Wells, but was pushed more in Miami, which had some great tennis. He failed to convert a match point in the second set tiebreak and came through in three sets. It was Zverev who came out on top in their next meeting at the Canada Masters in the fourth round, which was a tournament he went on to win. And then on the fast-paced courts of Beijing and China at the end of last season, Kyrgios powered through in straight sets. Their most recent meeting was actually the only one that hasn't taken place at a Masters 1000 event. It was in the Australia versus Germany Davis Cup tie end of January, beginning of February, and it was Zverev who triumphed in that encounter. That was the last tournament that Kyrgios played before taking some time out with injury, so we have to take that into consideration looking at the result. However, that was a best of five match, and it is the slams which are best of five matches where Zverev is currently struggling a bit to make a breakthrough, and Zverev still won this clash in straight sets. As I've already mentioned, what makes this prediction so hard, apart from their close rivalry beforehand and the fact that both players are completely capable of amazing tennis on their day, it's the fact that their runs to this particular stage have been so contrasting. It's a similar situation to one we saw in the women's game yesterday when Venus Williams, the seven-time Grand Slam champion, faced off with defending champion Johanna Conta. Conta had had quite a gentle path to the fourth round. She hadn't really been pushed at all in a similar way to Kyrgios. Meanwhile, Venus had played two really close matches, saving three match points in the second of these, and she came through against Conta in three sets when she would have been feeling fatigue, when she would have been questioned in her ability to win. And for someone like Venus, who is constantly fighting an energy-sapping illness, to come through like that, that makes the case for more battles ahead of a big encounter being more beneficial than sailing through and not really being troubled. I'm not saying these two situations are completely alike, Kyrgios has a massive serve that Conta could only dream of, but with two players who have had such a close head-to-head -head in times past, which Venus and Conta had as well, it does make me lean slightly in the favour of Zverev on this one. Also taking into consideration the pace of the courts, I know Kyrgios came through when they played last year, but Miami tends to have a higher bouncing and slower travelling ball than somewhere like Beijing, where Kyrgios was in top form and you only have to look at clips of the match to see how fast that ball was travelling. However, to then contradict myself, they will be playing at night, which will mean a cooler atmosphere and probably a more low travelling ball, which is the way both of them like to play anyway. Before I make my prediction today, I just want to point out that the bulk of these videos is the analysis and then we add on a prediction at the end. I try with my predictions, I try quite hard, but at the end of the day, I can't predict the future and I've noticed some of you seem to take it a lot more seriously than me. I'm not a prophet, so it's not going to ruin my life if I don't get a prediction right. I'm sorry if it ruins yours. I can never tell whether a certain player is going to walk up and have an off day. For example, Kyrgios in Australia for the Australian Open, he played a blinder to beat Joe Wilfred Songa and then he fell to Grigor Dimitrov not showing that same standard. And however much I can analyse, there are things like that that I just simply can't predict. I can only guess. And that's what a prediction is. It's a guess. An educated guess, but still a guess. So today's guess, all things considered and general 
generally going on the basis that his previous battles will have hardened him up, I am going to predict Alexander Zverev to win in three sets. Just to add, Zverev won two Masters 1000 titles last year, and despite reaching a final, Kyrgios is yet to claim a Masters 1000 crown. Obviously, this is one of the biggest opportunities either of them is going to get, because Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, Murray, Vavrinka are all absent from the draw, and it's an opportunity that either of them could take, or that neither of them could take, but this would seem the logical next step for Zverev on the way to claiming a Grand Slam trophy, winning a Masters 1000 title arguably of a little more prestige than the two he has won previously. So that's it for today, thank you for watching, just a heads up, I am away from home from Thursday evening until Monday, usually in this calibre of event I would start doing preview and predictions from the quarterfinals and onwards, but due to where I'm going and what I am doing, I won't be able to film any videos over the weekend. I do, however, hope to have another preview and predictions video up before I go away, so if you don't want to miss that, hit subscribe. Thank you to everyone who has helped us reach 750 subscribers, which is three quarters, yes, three quarters of 1,000 subscribers, which is our goal currently, because when we hit 1,000 subs, we will be doing a Q&A video and a giveaway, so subscribe if you want to be a part of that. Also, very quickly, I am now the tennis correspondent for Love Sport Radio in London, which you can listen to online, so check the link in the description for where you can listen to that. It's all different times, so generally I will put on social media when I'm going to be on. I hope you're all enjoying the tennis, thank you for watching, and I will see you at the next video.